At the start of mitosis, the inner and outer membranes of the nuclear envelope break down and merge with the endoplasmic reticulum. At the same time, the nuclear pore complexes that mediate transport across the envelope also disassemble. Transmembrane pore proteins move into the ER, while soluble components disperse into the cytoplasm. How these structures reform after mitosis is a question that fascinates Thomas Kirchhausen from Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm very interested in the biogenesis of organelles. Mitosis seems to be an interesting biological situation where you're putting an acute perturbation in cells. And when you're coming out of that state, often you can look at the biogenesis of organelles or situations in cells. The nuclear envelope has been proposed to reassemble through the fusion of ER tubules around the chromosomes. But this didn't fit with observations made in 2009 by Kirchhausen's postdoc Lei Lu using rapid live cell 3D imaging. We found that actually mitotic ER is predominantly sheet or cisternal rather than the tubular structure. So basically that suggested to us this sheet-like or cisternal-like ER membrane will provide nuclear email formation. Liu and Kirchhausen therefore re-examined nuclear envelope reassembly in HeLa cells expressing fluorescent markers of the ER and chromatin. The researchers found that during anaphase, ER sheets initially contact the rims of the dish-shaped chromosome masses moving to opposite spindle poles before extending to fully enclose the daughter cell nuclei. The ER membranes contacting the chromosome masses rapidly accumulated resident nuclear envelope proteins such as the lamin B receptor and excluded ER-specific proteins like reticulum 4A. These 3D renderings of time-lapse images show the initial deposition of ER membrane at the periphery of chromosome masses, followed by the extension of membrane around the inner and outer faces of the nuclei. 3D rendering also showed that the ER membranes enveloping the chromosomes were cisternal rather than tubular in shape, a fact confirmed by Mark Ladinsky at Caltech in Pasadena, California, who used high-resolution electron tomography to reconstruct the nascent nuclear envelope in anaphase cells. It's really ER cisterna that are coming next to the chromatin mass, and then they start to expand on the surface of the DNA and then create the nuclear membrane. Lou et al. think that ER cisterna might initially target the rim of chromosome masses in HeLa cells because the mitotic spindle and microtubule asters block the ER from contacting the outer and inner faces of the chromatin discs. I don't think there's any special signal or anything particular. It's simply that the very rim, that's where you have topological access. We have done an experiment where we put taxol, so we are locking the microtubules, and sure enough that retards uh, the buildup of the nuclear membrane. Or if you put mocorazole acutely at the time of cell division to depolarize the microtubules, now you have the topological axis, and in fact, you also increase the rate at which the nuclear membrane forms. Because the dynamics of spindle disassembly vary in different cell types, nuclear envelope formation may differ in cell lines other than HeLa. Lou et al. saw cisternae initiate envelope assembly all over the anaphase chromosome masses of BSC1 cells, for example. The researchers then turned their attention to the assembly of nuclear pores after mitosis. During interphase, nuclear pore components form new pore complexes by inserting themselves into the nuclear envelope. The same mechanism might apply to post-mitotic pore assembly, but some groups have proposed an alternative pathway called the pre-pore model. One of the main ideas of the pre-pore model is that you partially form nuclear pore complex even before nuclear envelope formation. So basically this precursor structure of nuclear pore, they are already assembled onto the chromatin surface, and when the nuclear envelope form, they just surround this pore structure to form the nuclear pore. Actually, to our surprise, we didn't find free pores. Instead, we find the pores actually forms after the nuclear envelope formation. By imaging cells expressing a fluorescent marker of the ER and a GFP tag nuclear pore in, or nuclear pore component called NOP133, Luetel found that pore complexes only reassembled in regions of the chromosome masses already covered by nuclear envelope. Moreover, by calibrating and quantifying the fluorescence of GFP NOP133, the researchers determined that the small amount of nuclear pore to accumulate on chromosomes before nuclear envelope formation corresponded to single protein units rather than higher order pre-pore structures. 
So we believe that the first step is uh, to sterilize ER membrane directly adhere onto the uh, chromosome mass. Then after that, nucleoporin only assembles onto the uh, nascent nucleic membrane. And this nucleoporin complexes somehow just generate the fusion between the inner nuclear envelope membrane and outer nuclear envelope membrane to generate a pore structure. The postmitotic reassembly of nuclear pore complexes therefore only occurs in the presence of nuclear membranes, just like the assembly of nuclear pores during interphase and in yeast, where the nuclear envelope remains intact throughout the cell cycle. It's a simple topological solution which now unifies what happens in interphase, what happens in mitosis, post-mitotic, and what happens in yeast. Because in all those cases, you always have first the nuclear membrane by layer, and now you create the pore. Of course, with differences of exactly how you trigger, or maybe you have a one factor that is different, of course, that's true. But topologically, you don't have to postulate now different models. It's just one model. It's always the same. To me, it's more satisfying. Lou and Kirchhausen are both now interested in investigating the details of post-mitotic nuclear pore reassembly. Now I'm establishing my own lab in uh, Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. We want to generate a more clear molecular picture of how does this nuclear pore complexes make the hole under the intact nuclear envelope membrane. That is a very interesting problem because it must involve, in my opinion, a way in which you fuse the outer and inner nuclear membranes. There's a fusion mechanism that has to be in place, and we have no idea how that happens. In the meantime, you can read more about the post-mitotic reassembly of the nuclear envelope and nuclear pore complexes in the paper by Lou et al., published in the August 8, 2011 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.